Well, there is new controversy now over the president's handling of the pandemic. Now that Fox News has confirmed the Biden administration is prioritizing race and ethnicity when it comes to giving out some potentially life-saving COVID treatments. I'm Harris Faulkner. You're watching Outnumbered. Joining me now, my co-hosts, Emily Campagno, Kaylee McEnany, Fox Nation host Tommy Lahren, former Utah congressman and Fox News contributor Jason Chaffetz. It's going to be a great hour. Good to see everybody. According to the new guidance updated in just December, the FDA says there are a number of factors to consider when determining who is at high risk as a patient and who will be el eligible for certain COVID treatments. Age and obesity are the top ones. But the FDA says race and ethnicity should be on that list. The new guidance reading this way, other medical conditions or factors, for example, race or ethnicity, may also place individual patients at high risk for progression to severe COVID-19. Now, I want to point out that unless somebody got a me medical degree over the weekend, none of us is doctors, but we all live in the real world. And Jason, when, when you're asking people to do things and mandating that people do things, it makes prioritizing other people specifically difficult, I would imagine, in this environment. I, I can't believe we're in a place in this country where triage is going to be based on race and ethnicity. I, I, I just don't understand that. So much for Barack Obama's, hey, we're not the red state, we're, we're not the blue states, we're the United States. I mean, so much for that. This president and this administration is doing more to divide us than you can possibly imagine. I just don't, I, I can't imagine there's any, any medical ethicist who would come back and say, this is the proper way to do it. And if they're going to do it on the treatment, I wonder what it would be like if we said, hey, maybe on the prophylactic measures, maybe oh. what if we said based on race and ethnicity, those, those people should be wearing masks. Are you kidding me? That is so absurd yeah, and that's... ridiculous. It, you, that's I, This is the kind of discussion we're gravitating to. Thanks, FDA. That's really interesting because what you're saying is, well, if we're going to tell people to be safe, do we only tell certain people to be safe and mask? Or, I mean, that is a fascinating question. Well, doctors have a thought on this, particularly a black doctor. That's who I wanted to talk to, former Surgeon General, Dr. Jerome Adams under President Trump, last hour on The Focus. Watch. We, we can't blame and shame people based on who they voted for or the color of their skin. What we need to do is really demand of this administration that they're getting more testing available, that they're getting more treatments available so that we don't have to make these horrible choices. So, Kaylee, the conversation had gotten to that point because I asked this simple question. Two people show up at the ER. One is black, one is white. They're both obese. They both have morbid conditions, uh, preconditions. You're going to pick the person with the darker hue. Why? It makes no sense. Um, well said by Dr. Jerome Adams. I worked with him. Um, he is a man who always says it right, and indeed he did so just there. But Harris, what's interesting to me is how states are operationalizing this. So you have the FDA, obviously, you know, a federal entity, suggesting that race should be a basis for potentially administering therapeutics. And what's happening on the state levels is they're really grabbing onto this. In Utah, they do a risk assessment by points, and you get two extra points solely based on the color of your skin, so not your risk factor, not comorbidities, just by the color of your skin. Uh, you hop on over to Minnesota and they literally say this, FDA's acknowledgement means that race and ethnicity alone, alone, so apart from risk, uh, apart from underlying health conditions may be considered in determining eligibility for therapeutics. That is a stunning claim to make and they're seizing on that federal government language and it got to the point where I was reading in the New York Post that a Staten Island doctor went to go give prescriptions, administer prescriptions for two patients mm -hmm. and the pharmacist literally said to him, before I authorize these prescriptions, disclose the person's race. Now the two patients did happen to be white, they did happened to get the therapeutics and then the pharmacy says we're just collecting this data for reporting purposes to the city but what a scary place that now to get well, a prescription they're asking you to disclose your race stunning what are they doing with that information though that they're collecting it right for the city but what is the city doing with that information I mean that that I had not read that um, you know Tommy Jason brought up something that I think is so critical and it's about division in this country right so if you want to look at someone and say well they probably don't have health care because of where they fall economically let's pull that person forth because they're 
you know, preconditions are probably off the charts. That's one thing. But, but race and ethnicity then throw this into a whole different category of division. What this feels like to me is reparations disguised as health and safety and a poor attempt by the Democrats to once again race bait and pander. You know, for a party that says they want unity, they're certainly going backwards on that. And they're actually sharing more ideas for segregation and more ways to break us apart. But you have to look at the motivation for this. Why do they want Americans, black versus white, straight versus gay, rich versus poor, why do they want these divisions in this country. What is the benefit for Democrats? Well, I think it's pretty easy. If we're all fighting each other, if we all think that we are fighting our fellow Americans, then we're not paying attention to what this administration is doing and how it's failing our country. But Harris, you and I have talked about this on this show before. If we want to talk about health and safety. We want to talk about certain groups that have more vulnerabilities. Let's talk about that and let's talk about health and safety yeah. in these communities. Communities that don't have access to, to good food, communities that don't prioritize exercise. And let's also keep in mind that these same Democrats Democrats who are now preaching this health and safety and have for the last two years spent over a year trying to close down gyms because they consider them a COVID risk. Wow. So we want to talk about keeping people healthy of all races. Let's start there and realize how many times the government has failed and maybe more government is not the answer because they certainly don't seem to know what they're doing. So Emily, I want to talk to you about the add-ons on this guidance because what Tommy is talking about is very true. And I, and I read it from the guidance right as we were getting into this hour. So obesity and age are like really up there, <laughs> okay? The add-ins parenthetically were race and ethnicity as an example of something that they'd like to, to also have on the list. Legally talk to me about that. And, and when does that become discrimination? So Harris Faulkner and, and six foot four cute guy she married, <laughs> white guy walk into the ER with our biracial children and sometimes it's hard to tell who's what um, and one gets taken before the other or I get taken. Do you think I'm really going to go ahead of my biracial children to get treatment? The answer is no. Like, where are we going legally with this? Right. So when you have a law or an ordinance or any type of rule that discriminates on the basis of race, then that is subject to strict scrutiny, which means that that the that entity, the government has to prove that there's a compelling state interest and it must be narrowly tailored this law to the the state interest for it to succeed, for it to pass constitutional muster. And here, as we've sort of been talking about in this ongoing conversation, this is a massively overbroad answer to what is a legitimate oh, concern. But the legitimate concern is two degrees back. So just to echo my colleagues' comments here, it is correct that people of color and minority communities are overrepresented of those who have kidney disease, diabetes, yes. obesity. But it's not because of their of the, their melatonin in their skin. It is because of societal factors like access to health care, access to adequate nutrition and exercise and the like historically and statistically speaking. So it's not about their actual race or ethnicity. It's the systemic things in the society that prevent them from getting that same access. So this kind of thing is totally overbroad, absolutely not narrowly tailored, and therefore unconstitutional. If I can add one more thing very briefly, uh, the, the risk ratio that you mentioned, you know, it mm -hmm. tops out for age at 10.6 with those 85 and older. Yes. And those are actually represented by more white people. So it's a, it's a really difficult, complex analysis, but quite clear when you see it for what it is. And adding on to Kaylee's anecdote from Staten Island, you know, that physician, rightly so, he said he was absolutely appalled and he said never in my career have I ever been asked what race my patient was it's a sorry state of times yeah mm. I mean all of it and we have to get real about who's vaxxed and who's not it's not all about politics I said this last hour there are a tremendous amount of people who are black and brown as we say black and Hispanic and other makeups that, that chose not to get vaccinated that they, they don't trust the government there are a whole host of issues are we going after that because this administration said it's a pandemic of the unvaxxed. Mm. It can't just be about politics because the numbers don't bear out. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.